In these last few slides in this section, I want to say a few things about this notion of best and optimal estimators. As we saw, spatial two-stage least squares is consistent, but it's not the most efficient. So in search of more efficient estimators, there are two papers in particular that explore this notion of optimal instruments and best two-stage least squares. And they all go back to the original expression that we used for the reduced form, where we saw that the reduced form, the, the conditional expectation for the spatially lag dependent variable given x was w times i minus rho w inverse x beta. Now, this then, of course, is the optimal instrument matrix. However, there is a catch, namely, this optimal instrument matrix includes the parameters. It includes rho and beta. So how do we go about this? We go about this by uh, implementing a two-step procedure. In the first step, we obtain consistent estimates for rho and beta. And as we know, spatial two-stage least squares as is with the WX instruments is consistent. So we can use those. We then plug these into the expression W i minus rho w inverse x beta, and then use these new instruments, these new um, matrices as the instruments in the second stage estimation. There is, however, a very important catch in practice. This requires the inverse of an n by n matrix, which is not very practical um, for large data sets. So this is the principle. The principle goes back to the original idea of the conditional expectation of the spatial lag term and the reduced form, which gives us this inverse. And the way we operationalize it, as this process is in a two-step procedure. First step, we get consistent estimates. Then we plug those into the matrix expression. We carry out the inverse and we move on to a second two-stage least, least squares estimation. This result yields so-called best two-stage least squares. There's another equivalent approach suggested in a paper by Collegian and others that avoids the inverse matrix and actually exploits the series expansion. So um, rather than carrying out the brute force inverse, we approximate it by a series of uh, a sum of a series of terms in powers of the other regressive coefficient rho and powers of the weights matrix, so increasing spatial lags of the x variables. Again, we do this in two steps. In the first step, we get consistent estimates for rho and beta using the standard approach, and then in the second step, we plug them into the series expansion. Uh, how far do we go with this series expansion? there is a suggestion to go up to um, the square root of n of the number of observations. However, for very large data sets, uh, more than 10,000 say, this, this is not necessary since the powers of rho, rho being less than one, very quickly go to zero, even for high values of rho. So this is the concept of a best two-stage least squares, which we can either accomplish by using the full inverse or by approximating the inverse by a series expansion. In both cases, it boils down to a two-step estimation process. And then, somewhat running ahead of the treatment of generalized methods of moments that we will cover next, in a paper by Lee, there is a general set of moment conditions um, laid out, and I, I don't want to say too much about this because we will revisit it, but uh, the first one is simply the uncorrelatedness of the instruments with the error term, the expected value of q prime u equals zero, and the second set is the new thing, which is a quadratic form in the error terms with a particular matrix P, and the matrix P has to be such that it either has its trace the sum of the diagonal elements equals zero, or all the elements on the diagonal are zero. So an obvious one for P would be the matrix W, because it has all the diagonal elements 
equals zero, but there are other matrices that satisfy the requirement that the trace is zero. So then the solutions of these equations yield the so-called optimal generalized methods of moments, which is consistent and asymptotically normal. And actually Lee shows in the paper that for normal error terms, this optimal GMM has the same limiting distributions as maximum likelihood. 